Thank you all for coming today. I know my dad would be so completely overwhelmed to see so many of you, all his family and close friends, so much of our Daystar team, and all the amazing men and women of God that he admired so much. I can't tell you how honored and touched he'd be to see how loved he was by so many. For me, my dad is probably the easiest person to talk about because he was my favorite person in the whole world. He was fiercely determined, very tenderhearted, and so funny. He always loved making jokes. I remember there's this one moment he was in the hospital. The nurses kept coming into the room to ask him questions, and one of them said, Mr. Lamb, where are you right now? And in his true quick-witted style, he boldly said, the United States of America. <laughs> That was just my dad being himself, finding humor in the most serious moments. He taught me so much, especially about what's possible when you have a God-given dream and you put your faith in the Lord to see it through. He came from humble beginnings, but never let his circumstances determine his destiny. When God put a vision for the future in his heart, he and my mom faithfully pursued it. And against all odds, Daystar was born. And it's been a dream. <laughs> Come true to work with my dad. And learn from his wisdom and insight. You know, he always said I was 99% like him. <laughs> and 1% like my mom. That must be why it feels like I've lost such a huge part of myself. He helped me become who I am, and he taught me there are some things in life you just can't calculate. He'd say, Rachel, we have to do our best and let God do the rest. Now we all know what a generous heart my dad had. He loved to give. But until now, I didn't realize the depth of the personal impact he made on people's lives. Over the last few days, I have marveled at the number of people who have texted me saying things like, you helped me. Are you believed in me when no one else would? He was also an amazing businessman, a trailblazer for the gospel and a pioneer in television ministry. But none of that mattered to him as much as having all of us following the Lord and serving alongside him in the ministry. His family is his greatest achievement. And while he will no doubt be remembered for so many accomplishments, his love for people, his commitment to take the gospel around the world, I'll remember him for his tender heart towards the Lord how he was led by the Holy Spirit and his relentless encouragement to reach for excellence and live fully for Jesus. Of all the things to miss, what I know I'll miss the most is our special time together. After every round of golf that he would play, I'd get a call on his way home. That was our time. We'd talk about our day. He'd tell me how he played and he would ask how Judah was doing. I'll especially miss the sound of his voice when he would call me his rage girl. As you might imagine, watching my mom walk through all of this over the last month has been nothing short of incredible. I've never seen such strength and love and devotion. I'm so proud of you, mom. To see you take up the mantle of leadership in the face of such loss and to watch your passion for people only go stronger, I'm in awe. We are all standing with you, and we will be right by your side in the days to come. You know, I always thought that I got my strength from Dad, but I'm starting to think maybe I got some of that from you, too. I was with my dad every single day while he was at the hospital, and I made him promise that he would fight. 
And he said, I'm not going to give up on God. And I would remind him of who he was. I'd say, you're a husband. You're a dad. You're a poppy. You are a son of God. You are a minister of the gospel. You have so much to live for. And as he neared the end, he said, I know that God is with me, but he is healing me, and I will declare the works of the Lord. Standing here today, I believe that still holds true. God did heal my dad, and he will declare the works of the Lord as his legacy speaks through the life of his children and his grandchildren. I love you so much, Dad, and I will miss you every day. But I know this isn't goodbye, and I will hold in my heart the certainty of this hope that I will see you again. Wow. I'm a what do you say after you hear your wife just pour out a heart like that? It's um, incredible. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Marcus Lamb loved God. He loved his family. And he had such a great big heart for the world to reach as many people as possible with the good news of Jesus. And you know, he studied the Word of God like no one I've ever met before. When I first joined the family all those years ago, I was told that uh, he had memorized over 7,000 Bible verses. And uh, I gotta tell you, I kind of found that a little hard to wrap my mind around that. I was thinking 7,000 Bible verses, that's a lot. But over the years, every single time I was with him, he would quote some sort of scripture to me. He lived what he preached, and uh, I saw that firsthand. Typically, so I've heard, uh, in-laws, well, you know, in-laws, right? I see a few people wiggling in their seats. <laughs> you know, I just loved being around Marcus. He was one of the favorite people to be around because he brought life, he brought truth, and he brought Jesus love wherever he went. He was a great guy. Most people know Marcus because he and Joni started, they pioneered and ran Daystar. <laughs> and uh, whenever I joke around and call him a genius to his face, he would consistently respond with this. He'd pull out his index finger and it was slightly curved. And <laughs> he'd say, now Josh, with that Marcus Lamb smile and that sparkle in his eye. He said, now remember this, Daystar isn't just run by me and Joni. We have the best advisor in the world, the Holy Spirit. Daystar is not ours, Josh, it's God's. And God takes care of what is His. And that's just such a, a comfort to me. And uh, I guess, you know, now moving forward under Joni's leadership, supported by our family that's unified as one, and uh, the Daystar family, we're going to continue Marcus' legacy going from glory to glory, reaching more people every single year with the good news of Jesus Christ. This has just begun. What God started, God is faithful to continue. And what the enemy meant for evil, you know what? God can turn it around for good. And you know, when we don't understand what is going on, we're gonna choose to trust in God. Even in our sorrow and our grief, we're gonna declare the goodness of God because that's what Marcus taught us and we're gonna continue moving forward. And Jesus, God, I just wanna thank you for the champion of faith that Marcus is. He's your servant, your son, he's Joni's husband. He's our father and he's our father-in-law. He's our children's poppy. He's all of your friend and he's a great leader and evangelist. And God, we thank you and we give you glory for Marcus Lamb.